Today we're going to talk about something really important and that is overheating, which I'm sure you've heard a lot about on YouTube in the past couple months, specifically because Lumix has put out two incredible cameras, the Panasonic S1R2 and the Panasonic S12, which I'm currently filming myself on. And Lumix has long been known as the camera brand that you can rely on for video features and especially in the reliability department. I have had the Panasonic S1, the Panasonic S1H, the GH5, and I've also used the GH6 and S52X and I have never had an overheating issue, not even a warning, but with the S1R2 and the S12, that has become a bit of a talking point. I live in West Virginia, but often shoot around the South and currently I'm doing a feature documentary that largely shoots in Florida where temperatures are often 90, 95 degrees. And while my A cam for that shoot is the DJI Ronin 4D, the Panasonic S1R2 and the Panasonic S12 are my B cams and I can't have overheating issues. That's just not something that I can deal with. And so I'm trying to test out different ways to make sure that the cameras never overheat. First, let's discuss why these cameras do overheat and that has to do with just how much the cameras have to process with these new 8K and 6K sensors. All ask for features like 8K and open gate and 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second. And the sensors that are able to do that with the readout speeds that we actually want create a lot of heat. Now the S52X and the S1H and all of the previous generations of Lumix cameras didn't overheat, but they were using a sensor that just took a lot less processing power to get the maximum amount of quality out of it. If we want the DJI Ronin 4D sensor in a tiny mirrorless body, then we're going to have some compromises and some issues. Even the other day, I was shooting with the Ronin 4D in 90 degree West Virginia heat, beating sun, and I got an overheat warning. The camera didn't stop recording, but I did get the warning. So even a body as large as the Ronin 4D with fans that are just pumping, still these sensors and processors do create a lot of heat. And so we have to take that into account. But the main factor that creates the overheating issue in these smaller mirrorless bodies are the media you use and the battery. So first, the S1R2 and the S12 use a CF Express Type B card. Now these cards are incredibly fast, which allows you to get higher data rates and faster offload speeds, but that means that they run a lot hotter. So those cards create a lot of heat. And the second is the battery inside the camera. The heat builds up around that battery as it's powering the camera, and therefore that creates some heat as well. So I've built a rig that gets around these two main variables, and hopefully will get us unlimited record time no matter what. So I'm gonna record my S1R2 with the external power, as well as recording to an external SSD, alongside my S12, which has a one terabyte pro-grade CF Express card in it, alongside the internal battery. So we'll record those side by side and see if the external power as well as the external SSD for recording really makes a huge difference. Let's do the test and then we'll come back here to talk about the rig. All right, quick note, we went through two batteries on the S12 and are about halfway through this 98V mount battery on the S1R2. And so I'm using the DC coupler, I think it's the DC18 on the S1R2 with USB-C power to the V mount and then have a Angelbird two terabyte SSD which has been recording for two hours and 40 minutes in 80 degree heat. So it's been in the shade most of the time, but it's 80 degrees out here, no overheat warnings at all. And I believe the S12 also had no overheat warnings going through two batteries. So both the S12 and the S1R2 did a great job on that last test. It was 80 degrees in the shade and both ran for almost three hours continuously, no overheat warning at all. So if you're in the shade, it probably works all right. And now we've moved into the full sun. I'm just gonna set these down and let them run. And I'm guessing they have a little bit more of an issue. The S12 is running a CF Express card with a battery inside. And so I'm assuming that one will overheat first if it does in 85 degree heat, pretty humid, direct sunlight. All right, let's see how they do.
So the S12 got about 15 minutes on that test, which is not great, but the S1R2 did much better getting closer to 30 minutes. Now, I'm going to pump up the fans in both to fast, which is a little loud for my taste, but I've also been in a lot of situations where cameras like the C300 or the Ronin 4D pump up their fans automatically to be pretty loud. And since I usually record sound off camera, it's not a huge deal. And then I'm also going to be adding this little fan right here on the back of the S1R2, and it's just powered via USB. And so I can plug that into my V mount battery and that should help cool it as well. And we'll see how much we get on this go round. Now that we're back in the studio, I've reviewed the footage, I reviewed all the tests, so what did we learn? First, I failed. Despite recording externally, running a dummy battery, having an external fan, putting the internal fan on fast, the camera still overheats in certain conditions. Now the conditions I had the camera in are probably the worst conditions you'll ever find yourself in, give or take five or 10 degrees. 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, full sun, no breeze, and actually no movement from moving the camera around, which does create a little bit of breeze and cools the camera down. If you lay your phone out on a table in direct sun in 95 degree heat, that thing's gonna overheat. Same with your computer, and same with a lot of cameras, especially the smaller bodies. It is almost impossible to not get these cameras to overheat. Whether you have a dummy battery, external SSD, fan on fast, thermal management set to high, these cameras will overheat in certain conditions. With that said, if you are inside, in shade, and it's under 90 degrees, then you're going to be fine as long as you're recording to an external SSD and using a dummy battery. In my experience, the external SSD is definitely the more important of the two. Those CF Express cards create a lot of heat. And so getting those out of the body will help a lot. I've also had the S1R2 in a few situations, including in Nice, France, when it was 80, 85 degrees, beating sun every day, and in normal documentary use of following people around, filming them as they're going in and out of buildings, being outside for 20, 30 minutes at a time, the camera never overheated on me once, and I only got one or two short warnings. So depending on the type of work you do, I mean, if you're just leaving a camera in direct sun for 30, 40, 50 minutes in 90 degree heat, then this is not the camera for you, straight up. Look for something else that does not overheat. And in that case, you're probably going for larger cinema bodies like a C300 or an FX6. All right, some other notes. The thermal management should always be set on high. There's just no reason to do any of these tests or use these cameras with the thermal management set on normal. They just kick off way too soon. So make sure you set the thermal management on high right as soon as you get the camera. I also noticed that if the fan speed is set on fast, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference compared to it being on normal. And I've done this in a few different situations where I didn't need to have audio on camera. It was external audio and the audio person was using a boom mic or the person was laughed and they were a good distance away. So I just hit it on fast just to make sure the camera stayed cool. And it made almost no difference. In some tests, it seems the fan speed on fast actually made the camera overheat quicker. I'm not sure what's going on there, but fan speed on normal seems to be the one that is the most useful in trying to keep these cameras cool. Also, you may have noticed that my pro grade CF Express card is actually not on the approved Panasonic list. And I did buy a couple of the Sandisk ones that everyone recommends and is on the approved Panasonic list. And those lasted less time than my older pro grades. And so I'm not sure what's going on there, but the pro grades do seem to run a bit cooler than the approved CF Express Sandisk cards. One bummer is that the S12 does not seem to be doing any better than the S1R2. When the S1R2 came out and there was a lot of talk of overheating, I thought, oh, I'll get the S12 for those three or four months of the year when it gets really hot around here and I need something that lasts a little longer. However, running the same test with the S12 with the external SSD and the dummy battery and the external fan, the S12 got about the same amount of time as the S1R2. And there you go, 18 minutes and 25 seconds. So now what? We've all run an insane amount of tests. I have used these cameras for weeks 
often in the sun, in and out of hot locations, and have had quite a few overheat warnings. The S1R2 has only overheated on me once, but luckily I had the S52X there as a backup and was able to keep shooting. Ultimately, and unfortunately, what we've learned is that these cameras in 90 degree plus heat in direct sun, and that's a very important point, they will overheat. And therefore, if you're going to use these cameras, if they're going to be your main cameras on any shoot, you'll be fine as long as you're in the shade, inside, and recording to an external SSD. But if you're doing a lot of full sun, really hot summer shoots, then I would recommend having something like the S1H or the S52X, either as a backup or as the camera that sits on a tripod while you use the S1R2 or the S12 to get different shots. I think it's also important that Panasonic actually looks into making their own fan in the same way that Canon created a fan battery grip for the R5 II because of the overheating problems with that camera, as well as the way Fuji did it on the Fuji X-H2S where the fan snapped on the back of the camera to help cool that camera body during its really nice recording modes. I think one reason we're all getting so caught up on the overheating in these two cameras is because Panasonic has always been sort of the bastion of reliability in their cameras. The GH6, GH7, GH5 were incredible micro four thirds cameras that never overheated, shot 10-bit 422, then internal RAW, and Panasonic continues to give us incredible video specs. And when it comes to their first generation of full frame cameras, the S1, S1, H, S5, those never overheated as well. And so I think that's the difficult part for a lot of us Lumix lovers to grasp is we were so excited when the S1R2 and S12 came out I mean, they are class leading cameras in terms of specs, in terms of dynamic range, in terms of color, in terms of all the beautiful things that we love in our cameras. And it's just a little disappointing to have these overheating issues. Now, since these cameras are mostly my B and C cams to my Ronin 4D, I probably won't be running them for 30, 40, 50 minutes continuous in 95 degree heat, but I will continue to use the external SSD to make sure that even in hot rooms where it's you know 75, 80 degrees, I'm not getting that overheat warning. And hopefully in the future, as Panasonic works on their next camera, hopefully something like an S1H2 or an update to their box cameras, that they really focus on making sure that they use these really amazing sensors with incredible specs and cooling those sensors so that we never have these issues in our dedicated video bodies. In my next video, I'm going to do a quick rig build for the S1R2 and S12. So if you wanted to see all the components I used in this video to try and help cool the camera as much as possible, make sure you like this video and subscribe to see that video. All right, we'll see you then.